This episode of Soji Knows Best is brought to you by Lynda.com. The Nexus lineup of phones is Google's take at how Android should be ran on a device. Hardware-wise, software-wise, it usually brings the best of both worlds together and meshes them into Google's own vision of how they want Android to feel in your hands. And this new Nexus 5 is aimed to try to sum up this vision that Google has. And I'm going to do this review and see exactly what it is bringing to the plate and where it stands on the market against all these other top Android devices. Now, Google enlisted LG to manufacture the Nexus 5 just like they did with the Nexus 4, and I'm overall pleased with the design and the hardware and just the overall feel of this phone. The soft touch back along with the overall shape of the phone and the fact that it feels light but still sturdy. Uh, this phone, for the price point, feels like a premium phone, and that's something that I wasn't really expecting for that price, uh, but they did a really good job with making the phone feel like it's made for your hand. And then they even like the little details with the volume buttons and also the power button, how they are made out of ceramic. And so the Nexus 5 is really just a combination of a sleek, lightweight design that I really can't find anything bad to say about it. And now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the display. And the Nexus 5 is rocking a 5-inch full 1080p display, and it's a really sharp display. Some people have compared it to other displays in the market and, and kind of looked at it. It may not be as bright, and it's a little washed out compared to some of the other phones. Um, but I think just using this phone by itself, I really didn't have any issue whether it was indoors or outdoors. But other than that, the fact that this display really isn't in the top three displays on the market right now, it's not going to deter me from enjoying it, and I think it shouldn't deter you either. Now below the display on the bottom, you will find one speaker. It's gonna be on the left-hand side of the micro USB port. And this speaker does suck. The speaker is not great at all. It's in a horrible position because of the fact if you're gonna be gaming or watching a movie in landscape mode, if you are holding it in your hand, uh, more than likely your finger will be blocking it and the sound is really not gonna be coming out at all. And it almost forces you to have to use headphones if you are gonna be enjoying any type of multimedia with this phone, which is definitely a letdown. Now, internally, the Nexus 5 is pretty solid on paper. It has a 2.26 gigahertz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor, two gigabytes of RAM. You can get either 16 or 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Um, has dual-band Wi-Fi, NFC capabilities, Bluetooth 4.0 LE, and also has wireless charging that you can use with a compatible dock just to simply place your phone on, and it'll go ahead and start charging. But now, while we're on the subject of charging your phone, the battery life on this phone is inconsistent. Well, at least it was for the first few days of me using it. Now it has a 2300 milliamp battery inside of it, which Google says should be able to get you up to about 17 hours of talk time and 300 hours of standby time. And I would say just normal usage during the day. It was about average as another phone like the iPhone 5S was. Uh, but when it came to the standby time, I would go to sleep with about 25% of my battery left and wake up and it'll be completely dead. So the standby time was my biggest issue with the battery. Now, I've been using this phone for a little over a week now, and I have seen that the battery life has improved. This morning when when I woke up my phone was not dead and I only had about 30% left so that was a really good thing so uh, I think battery life improves over time but this may be something that Google can actually fix in a software update. Now on to the most talked about hardware feature of the Nexus 5. That's going to be the camera. And I'm not saying talked about in a good way necessarily. Um, but this phone features a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and an 8 megapixel rear facing camera that has optical image stabilization, which is definitely a plus, which is going to help you take less shaky videos and also decrease the possibility of you taking blurry pictures. And it also has a new HDR plus mode, which is if you use HDR a lot, this is going to be slightly better than what you can find on other devices. But that's really where the buck stops with the camera. Because uh, overall, the camera quality is nowhere near the top of the market right now. Again, it, you will be able to get some decent shots on it, but me just being an Instagrammer, or somebody who likes to take a lot of Facebook pictures and just pictures in general, every single day I'm taking at least 10 pictures uh, with my phone. And then another thing is that the shutter speed is slower than what it was on the Nexus 4, which I don't understand because this is clearly better hardware and better software. And so if you had to pick one weak area of the Nexus 5, that will have to come in the camera department. But with that being said, let's go to move on to the software, which is absolutely the best part of this phone and the best software on any type of cell phone that I personally use to date. Android 4.4 KitKat is just really just the culmination of Google spending years and years on Android to mold it into its own little pretty baby. And now we have KitKat, which is the smoothest operating system that I personally ever use. It's almost like it actually is predicting where your finger is going to move. It's that silky smooth. Moving in and out of applications, multitasking, 
asking, adding a widget to your home screen, doing all these different things. You can do it one after the other without missing a beat, and it just feels like you don't have to hesitate or wait at all for the operating system to catch up. It's actually you going to be doing the catching up while using this OS. And Google also elected to go with a flatter design for Android 4.4 KitKat, and the icons are slightly bigger. They're really sharp and bolder to me. And it's all these subtle changes that Google did with Android 4.4, which you may not notice out of the gate, but it just really provides for a more organic experience uh, with Android instead of having some type of skin on top of it. This is pure Android at its finest. And some other things that Google has changed around in 4.4 KitKat is that if you want to actually change the widget out, it's not located next to your applications anymore. You actually have to tap and hold on the screen and it'll pull up this um, options where you can change out your wallpaper or go into settings and change your home screen layout. Um, but also you have the widgets option right there. And also if you're listening to music and you go to your lock screen, uh, the lock screen will now feature a full size artwork of that song or album that you're listening to. And of course you still have this controls uh, that you can use to control the playback. And now apps can have the ability to go full screen like the Playbooks application and you can now read a full book and it'll get rid of everything as far as the buttons and the menu bar and all that stuff. And you really just get immersed in reading a book or doing whatever you are that's taking advantage of full screen mode. And now another thing is that Google Now is just one swipe away from the left to the right of the screen and you're in Google Now, which is going to have your own personal information, your favorite sports scores, uh, your favorite stocks that you want to follow, the weather in your location, um, your airplane ticket information, all these different things that you can customize to really have your own personal experience. It's going to be in Google Now. And then if you're in Google Now or on the home screen, doing a Google search is only two words away. All you have to do is say, OK, Google, who's the president of Zimbabwe? And there you have it. And so now Google searches have gotten even faster. So you don't have to press any buttons or look for anything. Just say, OK, Google, and you're set to go to go ahead and start searching the Internet. Now, the last couple of new things come with communication. One is going to be the new Hangouts application, which is basically a combination of Google Plus Hangouts and also to your SMS messages now. So it's basically all merged into one application and you can have everything just in one single view if you wanted to. And also Google has added emojis to the native keyboard in Android. And I would say these are some of the best emojis that I've seen on a device. I know that may be pretty weird to hear um, coming from me, but if you use emojis, um, you're really like the ones that are in Android 4.4 KitKat. And then the other thing with communication is going to be the new phone application, which is basically contacts, dialer, all that stuff merged into one. But now if you're going to be doing a search for a phone number that you don't have in your contacts already, you don't need to go do a Google search, or open up Google Maps like I've done in the past. You can actually just use the search box at the top and find the, the number to your nearest Walmart and call it directly from your contact section, which is pretty sweet. And this is basically all the new things in the Android 4.4 KitKat and all the little animations, all these little things, again, like I said before, really make for the best version of Android and the best experience that I've used uh, with a mobile phone OS. And with this, Google's really sending the message to consumers and manufacturers that stock Android is not a bad way to go. So overall, guys, the Nexus 5 is one of my favorite phones of 2013. And so from a design and hardware standpoint, the Nexus 5 is very solid. Software is a plus, as I mentioned before. And really, the only thing that can probably keep somebody from buying this phone, at least in my case, will probably be the camera performance. The camera really is just not that great. Decent, but it should be better. But it's really hard for me to judge it very harshly because of the camera because this phone only starts off at $349 for the 16 gigabyte version. And then if you want 32 gigabytes, it'll take you up to $399. And both of these prices are off contract, no contract at all. But for me, the Nexus 5 is really one year away, just one update away from being the perfect Android phone. If they really can nail down the camera in the next version of this phone. It's gonna be really hard to beat. And so that's gonna wrap up my review of the Nexus 5. Leave your comment down below what you think about this phone. I know some of you have it out there. Leave your own little personal review and your pros and cons about the phone down below so other people can get another opinion about it. And thanks for watching this video, and I will catch you later. Peace. Today's sponsor is Lynda.com, which is an online learning company that has over 77,000 video tutorials to help teach you software, creative, and business skills. And so you can learn about web design, programming, photography, audio, video, 3D, and animation, a whole bunch of different things on this website. And membership start at just $25 a month, and they provide you 24-7 unlimited access to top quality video tutorials from experts that have real-world experience. And so if you want to try this out absolutely free for seven days, you can go to lynda.com forward slash soldier, either on your computer or your iPhone, or your iPad via one of their apps. Again, that's lynda.com forward slash soldier.